Hi, and welcome back to Photoshop Elements Imaging Techniques and Tips. I'm your host, Ken Keith. And today, uh, which is uh, August 29, 2010, that's the recording date, and it marks our first anniversary uh, with Vimeo and this series of imaging techniques, especially for beginners in Photoshop Elements. And we appreciate you watching here in the U.S the local user group in Kansas City, Missouri, and all of you who have uh, been so kind to tune in around the world. Now we're going to look uh, briefly today at uh, some eye-touching techniques. Uh, we have um, uh, talked about a few of these uh, before in passing, and we've got a couple of new things to talk about today. Uh, on the screen here is our lovely eye model, Rhoda and uh, I have duplicated the original layer as you see here and it's, it's layer one. Now uh, we'd like to do uh, a couple of things here um, has very pretty eyes and uh, if you'd like uh, in your photographs to enhance eyes a bit there's a number of things which can be done there's some commercial kits out there uh, uh, Scott Kelby, David Clearden, and uh, th those are have been designed for the uh, full Photoshop, but uh, some of the plugins and actions may work here in Elements. But uh, without uh, purchasing anything else, well, we're going to make a few little enhancements here. Uh, we have a number of catch lights uh, from the uh, umbrellas and the lower reflector and actually this has a little bit of a catch light from the uh, from an open window that was very bright and we'll probably eventually take that out. Now one way you can uh, uh, pop up uh, the color here is with the sponge tool uh, go up to your mode and you have two of them saturate and desaturate you can do saturate and I've seen where people have said well put your flow rate somewhere 40 to 50 percent uh, even with at 100 here it's a very subtle kind of a thing so instead I'm going to do something maybe a little more dramatic uh, than, than that however and we're just going to uh, pick up the uh, the tool for uh, over here in in your box and just get the lasso tool be fine and uh, if you're using a pen and tablet like I am uh, it it helps a bit as far as precision but uh, I'm actually just going to do this very fast because you understand what I'm doing here and I'm not going to take the uh, amount of time necessary uh, to do this uh, as one would for something that you're going to sell so I've made this selection here with the lasso tool. I'm going to hold my shift key. You see the little plus sign comes up so we can add to this selection. We want the uh, both eyes, <laughs> that was nice, uh, to come up at the same time. I'm going to select, I'm going to stay away from the, uh, uh, the center portion and we're going to stay away from the outer ring. And this is sometimes called the iris ring uh, and uh, some people it's more pronounced than others. But in any case we're going to uh, uh, so select this, these color areas. We're going to go up to our uh, top menu, the select one, and we're going to feather it uh, maybe four pixels and click OK. And smooth that out and then simply go to enhance color and hue and saturation and we're just going to uh, we're going to leave here as master and we're going to move the saturation slider up just uh, well actually to about there click OK and control and D can take away our marching ants okay, and uh, we're going to turn this layer on and off so you can uh, we did this on the duplicate layer so that we have uh, control over opacity and other things uh, but we're going to see that is the before and that is the after a little more uh, pop in there 
Uh, you don't want your colors to get too crazy unless you're looking for some sort of special effect there. But then now the last thing that we're going to do um, on this eye to also increase it is go back and work on this iris ring. Uh, once again, you can use a um, your sponge tool for saturation that's also um, pretty subtle and uh, has variable um, results, but I'm going to actually get my brush tool, set my foreground color to black and with an opacity uh, well, somewhere maybe about 20% uh, and we're just going to paint on this dark ring I'm going to make, we'll probably need to adjust your brush size as you go along there and there and you can go over it again if you like to to pick up the, oh, the whatever effect that you're you're looking for we're just here wanting to make the the eyes especially pop out the ring is dark and uh, you may or may not be able to appreciate all of this on uh, this particular recording your monitor uh, but um, uh, you definitely will uh, when you try this at home now I'm going to turn this layer off and turn it you got that and we're going to turn it back on this is a considerable difference it really pops those eyes right out and that's one of the things we're going to talk about and we're going to move on now to another subject all right now this is an unretouched one uh, we're just starting from the raw file and uh, opened it into the editor so uh, one thing that we notice uh, when this uh, girl smiles um, and this is a pretty common problem for everybody or a lot of people anyway and that is that the eyes are not the same size and when she smiles this cheek tends to come up she's also uh, pushed up a little bit here with her shoulder and uh, you see this eye is quite a bit narrower than this one so if I should look right here the size of this area the white of the eyeball as opposed to this one here now there's a couple of things we can do and we've uh, probably talked about using the liquify tool and that can help but these eyes are pretty round and once you get into liquify you run the chance of things getting a little bit on the bulgy side and so what we're going to do here now once again we're going to use our uh, lasso tool uh, you could you could do something else uh, we're just going to go around this eye give it a little room don't get close to the eye itself or overlap into the eyelashes let's give this a feather so uh, what we do later will blend in well I'm going to feather it uh, maybe 10 pixels and click OK and then we're going to press Control J and that puts our eye selection over here on its own layer and now let's go ahead and uh, get the um, uh, free transform tool uh, with your control and T if you're working on uh, a, a PC and uh, there's uh, two things that we we want to do here uh, and uh, one of them is if you look up here there's these this little uh, grid of uh, a square grid with nine little squares in it and this is a uh, place where it'll pop up and says reference point reference I'm sorry reference point selection and you want to make certain that the center one is grayed out which is, means that that one is selected and then we'll start out with constrained proportions and this is normally what um, where you want to be with the constrained proportions box checked and we're going to talk about something else here in just a bit I'm going to get my zoom tool here and bring this up a little bit more alright 
So it is often safe to go up about 2% and you can input that in either one of these fields since the proportions all are constrained. So instead of 100 we're going to put 102.0% in there and click OK. And uh, we have some uh, fine blending here because we did that feather. I'm going to turn this uh, high layer on and off. You can see the difference here. Okay, the, this is before and this is after. Uh, that's quite a bit of improvement. We might even be able to go up uh, another percent or two on that. And I'm also going to go back here to undo, the, undo that free transform. And um, I'm going to place it again. Control T. Oh, excuse me. And this time I'm going to take off constrained proportions. Generally speaking, you will have that uh, need that uh, checked. But uh, we're going to experiment around just a little bit with this one. And uh, the 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 width uh, and the, and the height. Uh, are now un unlinked. Uh, this width is not bad, and that what I'm going to do is I'm going to to put 103 percent in uh, for the height, and click OK. Now let's turn this one on and off. Okay, that is before. And that's after, and, and that did open up her eye just a bit. So when you're working with uh, this technique on eyes, start out with constrained proportion, and then um, experiment around. With, uh, generally speaking, the, the, the width is all right, but uh, it's the height that you can uh, do unconstrained proportionality there and uh, open these eyes up just a bit more. I well, hope you've enjoyed. Thanks again uh, for watching throughout the past year, and we'll hope to have some nice things and surprises and helpful tips and techniques in the upcoming year. Have a great week, and we'll talk again.